All right, welcome back to chapter 11, section 7. We are going to use geometric probability today. And you've probably used probability before. Um, maybe you hear it on the weather. What's the chance of rain today? Or what's the probability I will pull a blue marble out of the bag? So that's kind of where we are headed today. Um, just a couple vocabulary terms. Probability is the measure of the likelihood an event will occur. And that's kind of what you had um, used before. And we are going to transition into the geometric probability, which is the ratio that involves a geometric measure, such as length or area. And we are actually going to use both today. So just a quick example of what you have probably used before. Um, with probability and so in my bag of marbles I want to know what the probability of pulling a blue marble is and how you can kind of think about setting up your probability is what do you want to happen over what how much is in the entire bag so um, this is how probability will be written the probability of the blue marble I have blue, four blue marbles in my bag, so that's going to go on the top over my entire bag, and I have 16 marbles in my bag. Always reduce, reduce, reduce. That becomes to 1 over 4, and I'm going to put that in a decimal form and in a percentage form. So it, there's, it's a 25% chance I will pull a blue marble out of that bag. So transitioning into the probability using links, we're going to let AB be our entire segment that contains our segment CD. If we would happen to pull point K off of CB, chosen at random, we want to find the ratio of it, the length of CD to the length of AB. And we want that point K to fall on CD. So what's the probability that that will happen? So that's always going to go on top. What we want. The length of CD, which you will find the measure of, divided by the length of the entire segment, which is the length of AB, which again you will find the um, measure of. So let's put that into an example form. So using the probability of links, we want to find the probability of a point chosen at random on FJ would be on GK. So again, the entire length of our segment is FJ. So again, the entire goes on the bottom. So our length of FJ will go on the bottom. And what we want to happen is we wish that point would fall on this segment GK. So that's what is going to go on the top, the length of GK. Now you can do the absolute value and do the subtraction or you can count. Um, either one will work perfectly. So the length of GK starting on 6 I'm going to subtract going to negative 3 and that's going to be over um, J starts at 7 minus F is at negative 5. So putting that as a ratio 6 plus 3 gives me 9 over 7 plus 5 gives me 12. I'm going to reduce that down to 3 fourths, which is 0.75 as a decimal. And we know to make that a um, percentage, we can move that decimal place over to the right two um, spots, and we would get 75%. All right, so we are on a shuttle from our house to downtown, because sometimes some of the busier... Um, cities don't have very good access to the highways or it's a little bit, of course, traffic-y. So we're going to use the shuttle today. So we know that this shuttle is running every 10 minutes. So that's the max amount of time that we would have to wait because when we get there, we don't know when the last shuttle came. The ride from your boarding location 
to the downtown takes 13 minutes. So we know in our time that we have, we have to put in there 13 minutes. Because that's when I get on the bus to get to downtown, that has to take 13 minutes. One afternoon, we arrive at 2.41, but we have a goal to get downtown at 2.57. We want to know what the probability of this situation might be. We didn't give ourselves a whole lot of time. So, the longest you can wait for a shuttle um, to get to downtown, we need to find. So, we are going to almost work back for backwards. We are... If we get downtown at 2.57, it takes us 13 minutes to get there for sure. So let's take that 13 minutes away because we have to include that in there. So we have to be on the shuttle at 2.44 or earlier. And probably earlier would be key. So that doesn't give us a whole lot of time to hope that the bus shows up at. So how long do we wait or how long can we wait for that bus to show up? The longest we can wait, let's find it out. So I have to get on the bus at 2.44 because of that 13 minutes. And I show up at 2.41, so really, that bus really needs to show up in three minutes. Or I might not make it in time. Alright, so let's put that into um, a model. So we need to make sure we get down there at 257 and we know it takes us 13 minutes to get down there. We we know that. Um, and we got there at 241 so that lap time is the only time we can wait and you know it might show up in 10 minutes so we might not even make it down there but we know that we can only wait three minutes for it to arrive to get down there so what's that probability that we might make it down there in time so our favorable wait time how long can I wait for this shuttle to get there and we found out that was only three minutes and since the shuttle runs every 10 minutes that's gonna be our max time so our ratio of this situation is 3 to 10. So the probability that we will get down there by 257 is really only 30%. Not a very good chance. Alright, let's look at the probability of an area. So pretty much the same kind of concept. Um, we're going to let our region J, our big area, contain region M. So if we pull point K from this random or chosen at random, what is the probability that it might land on area M? So that ratio is going to be area M to the area of J. So we want our point to fall on the region of M. So that's what goes, remember, on top. So we're going to find the area of M and we're going to divide that by the area of J, the entire area. So this is where our formulas from this section will come, or this chapter will come into play because we have to know how to find the area of many different shapes. Alright, so we are going golfing, and that is not my best sport, but that's okay. Um, so the golf ball is hit and stops on the green. A prize is won if it stops in the painted circle. So here's our painted circle. If the ball stops in that painted circle, we win a prize. The diameter of the green um, and circle are shown at the right. If the ball is equally likely to stop in any point on the green, what's the probability that it will um, that a prize is won? So we see two circles there. So we know to find the area, we have to use the area of a circle, which is pi r squared. They have given us both diameters, so let's make sure we have our radius. So the radius of the green is going to be half of 75, which is 37.5 feet. And the radius of our um, painted, or our cup, we could call it, is half of 15, which is 7.5 feet. All right, now we are ready to solve for the areas. So we need to find the area of the painted, because that's when the prize is won. That's what we want to happen. And then we need to find the prob or the area of the entire um, region that we are looking at. 
So we're going to put the painted circle on top. Our radius is 7.5, so pi times 7.5 squared, which gives us 56.25 pi. And then that is going to be divided by our green, which is pi times 37.5 squared, which is 1,406.25. Pi. And notice I didn't include the pi in my um, calculations because that pi cancels out, which is really nice. I'm going to reduce that down to 1 over 25. So that's the probability that it will happen. Not a very good chance. That's why a hole in one is super hard to get. So 1 over 25 is the probability to win a prize or 4%. Let's do a couple of examples down here. So we want to find the probability that a point chosen at random ends up um, falling between M and N if my entire segment is LP. Alright, so remember what I want to happen is going to go on top. So the length of MN goes on top and then the length of LP is going to go on the bottom. Alright, go ahead and find those two links and solve it out. I will be checking that um, these three problems. On number two, in example two, suppose we arrive at the pickup location at 238. We want to find the probability, probability we'll get downtown. So we need to figure out how long we can wait before we need to get on the bus. And remember, we have to get on the bus by 2.44 to make it down 13 minutes, um, to make that ride of 13 minutes. So we're going to now subtract the 2.44 from 2.38, which gives us six minutes to wait. And remember how long, and you can fill in the blank, how long, is the max time. And go ahead and solve that equation. What's the probability that we'll make it down there on time? Alright, and the third one. On the green in example three, the hole is now smaller and our diameter is only 4.25. What's the probability that the ball will stop in the hole? Alright, remember we want the probability that it will be in the hole. So, the area of our hole divided by the entire area of the green. All right, go ahead and complete those three problems. We will be checking for the completion. Since you guys are listening, um, if you will go ahead and put a star on the bottom of this page, and also, um, from 1 to 5, 5 being I really liked it, rate this flipped classroom. Give us an idea of, you know, did you learn a lot from it? Do you feel good about the concepts? Um, not necessarily did you like the homework, but how do you feel about learning um, in this different situation? Thanks for um, all of your hard work on doing the notes and listening to these um, screencasts. Um, hope you have a wonderful day.